Good evening, welcome to this video. Today we have a review of the Chinese M3A3 First PTG. This is a premium tank available in China for 700 Golden Eagles, but is also available as part of the Chinese Starter Pack. This vehicle is actually very good, and whilst it does have a couple of flaws, those flaws are few and far between. This vehicle can definitely get a lot done, but it does tend to struggle a little bit in the up tiers, but that's mainly down to the gun. But I encourage people to really learn weak spots with this gun anyway. It won't always get through weak spots with certain tanks. I'm looking at UM4A3105. But generally speaking, this thing can generally kill most of the tanks that it meets. But sometimes you have to get a little bit up close and personal. This tank, of course, is no different to the regular Tech Tree M3A3 Stewart. And the only real differences are the decals and various markings on the vehicle. Plus a slightly more... Like, it's very, very slightly, because of my eyes, really. At least to me, at least. It's very similar skin, but this seems a little bit brighter to represent the tank a little bit more. That's probably because it's also a newer model, I suspect, but even... So, well, a newer model compared to the other Chinese M3, because obviously this was added much later. But generally speaking, this vehicle is exactly the same as the one in the tree. So... Should I recommend picking it up as part of the starter pack or buying it separately? And either way is really good. I mean, it's a good tank. Like, obviously, it, as I said, it does have flaws. But the vehicle itself is quite capable. But obviously, it does have a couple of flaws, which we're going to talk about. So the main one is obviously the armor. And I'm mainly referring to the turret and the hull. Well, the front of the turret and this section of the hull. This part of the hull is completely fine. This is actually quite strong, and if angled, this can bounce quite a lot. The problem is no one really shoots here. And if you try to angle the tank, people can just shoot right here, and it's only 35mm of effective armor, which will stop 50 cows, but it won't stop a whole lot else. The transmission can eat or also eat a shot, but that's not guaranteed. The turret armor is where it gets interesting, though. Originally, this used to be a 50mm plate followed by a 38mm plate, but it's not the same anymore. So the turret front is a little bit weaker, and the mantle area is obviously a little bit weaker as well. This does affect the survivability of the vehicle, and obviously with it being easy to penetrate, more tanks can definitely take out your gunner and also breach, and that can obviously get you killed. There is obviously also a weak spot for 50 cows to get through, which is your turret ring. Obviously, I'm going to mention this in the gameplay as well, as you'll see. But generally speaking, you, if you've played the one in the tree, you should know most of this. But of course, the one in the tree is completely free, and if you choose to pop a talisman on it, it is 530 G. But bear in mind, you do not get the SL bonuses that the premium benefits you. The premium, obviously without any boosters on, gives you around 40% more SL in terms of gaining SL. But these are low tier tanks, so don't expect it to be too great. Obviously on the vehicle as well, you do gain access to two 30 caliber machine guns, one coaxially and one up here, which is operated by the commander. And this one does sometimes help against lighter vehicles, can also target aircraft to some extent. But the main thing that you need to be considerate of is the main gun. Now you do get a stabilizer that works to around 9 to 10 miles per hour, and it can definitely do some work. But that won't always guarantee a penetration on target. And this is where I need to talk about the gun. Now, 87mm of penetration is pretty okay. That's that's not too bad. But obviously, you're not going to be able to pen a lot of the tanks in an up tier, specifically from the front. Now, some of them you will, but even some tanks at your own tier, i.e. M4A3 105s, they cannot be penetrated from the front. And it's really down to you getting around their side. And with the 37's lack of damage against tracks, you can't really detrack an M4A3105 in order to get around it. But as long as you can get your gun on target, this gun generally cracks most tanks at its BR. You'll also see me engage a Panzer IV H in the gameplay, and as you'll see, it does obviously need turret shots in order to kill. And that's why I also went for his breach, so that way I had time to deal with the other vehicles that were involved in that match. And obviously, same story with the Panzer 3N, which you'll also see in the gameplay. Because if I'd have shot the hull of both of those tanks, it's unlikely I would have penetrated. Whilst we were at closer distances, it's still not to be relied upon. 
But generally speaking, this is a very good vehicle, so I would definitely recommend picking it up if you can. But of course, it can be bought as part of the starter pack where you get the H81A2. So if you pick up that, it's a great deal. I do have videos on the starter pack, and I also have a tier list on in terms of starter packs. So do make sure to go check those out. But anyway, I'm going to hand you over to the gameplay now. It's just me in this gameplay where we have a bit of a funny moment with Gaijin's physics. And we also meet a bunch of revenge killers who don't get their revenge kill. At least one of them doesn't. Anyway, I'll see you all on the next one. Let's drop Hardy up at the top. We're going to be a bit more aggressive this game. We're going to push to these rocks. Which I normally don't do. But, you know, it's something to try out, I guess. Oh, shit. That's why I have the machine gun. And there's another one there. He caught me completely off guard. Sounds to me like they've got tanks with them as well. Like, proper tanks. Yep, yeah, that's a Panzer IV. We're not going to be able to really kill that. We can go for the turret, though. Got his breach. Good. Let's be a bit more aggressive and push the flank. Oh, shit. There's a lot there. Your gun doesn't work, buddy. Thank you. Learn weak spots of enemy tanks. Your gun won't always pen the front armor of a Panzer IV, so... Learn your models. And learn your weak spots. Can I get up here? Yes, I can. Apparently I can't scout this guy, though. There we go. Uh, buddy, I'm literally right here. Okay, we're going to do a sneak attack. Hello. <laughs> oh no, we're stuck. Uh, this has gone completely wrong. Okay, we might be in a sticky situation here. I don't think I can get out of this on my own. No, I think we're just going to have to stay here and wait for the inevitable revenge kill, personally. Which, judging by the fact that we're getting Ardy dropped on us, won't take long at all. Come on, baby. We are moving. We are moving. Come on. War Thunder's perfectly balanced physics. We're free! Surprised that worked. And just in time. For Mr. Angry. And Mrs. Angry. A happy bloody couple. I've got a teammate waiting for you. Got a radiator. I know where to shoot that thing, buddy. I have that tank. But I don't mean the Italian one. Well, I do have that one, but you know. Yeah, your 50 cals ain't doing squat for me, buddy. How are you not dead? Die, please. Thank you. Oh, break. The break's terrible in this thing, as you can tell. And that's why revenge killing doesn't always pay off. That's for sure. Using the truck that I reviewed only a couple of weeks ago? Like, really? Well, a few weeks ago, I should say. Like, come on. I know for a fact that thing can't kill me. It could probably go for the turret ring, but like... He didn't even bother to shoot there. Uh, I've got a Sherman to back me up here, so I'm going to wait for the Sherman to move up a little bit. 
But yeah, that is definitely why revenge killing isn't always the most beneficial thing. Although, we probably would have been dead if we couldn't move from that spot. It's just lucky that Gaijin's physics helped us out a little bit. Okay, oh. That did nothing. That did something. Come on. There we go, got him. We will attempt a flanking maneuver. Okay, you're dead. Don't need to worry about you. Scout him. We need to push this flank now. Whilst the enemy team is distracted. Okay, he's dead, but there's a medium tank up here. I think it's still alive. Yes, yes it is. Hello there, sir. Where are you? Thank you. Get your engine. We have flanked and spanked. Just like the Germans did in the Ardennes. And all that shit. Okay, I'm going to quickly... Oops. Sorry, Puma. I'm going to grab some smoke grenades because we're going to need them. I suspect the Germans are going to be very angry. That was my engine sound I was getting concerned about. Uh, drop some freshly got an RD up there. We're going to need to push the C point now. Or the B point, sorry. Would help if I could actually reverse. And I don't mean the tank, I mean my poor driving. Right, that Sherman camping the spawn isn't actually helping us right now. All he's doing is just annoying people. Which means it works, but... I don't want to sod off for the meantime, but we need to move. Because we can't sit here. BT-42, I'm going to scout that. That was a poor shot. That was also a poor shot. I just got my driver a little shit. Uh, I'll fend him off in the meantime, hopefully. Ah, oh, my track's out, I didn't even realise. Nah, you got me there, fair and square. Could have probably aimed a bit better, but that's completely fine. But there you go, that's what this tank can do if you get it into a good spot. And not only that, have a bit of Gaijin physics to help you out. It certainly does some work. But just be mindful, your teams aren't going to be that great.